by court in, in a majority decision of 5-2, Lovelace Johnson JSC and Amadou Tanko JSC dissenting on the issue of jurisdiction, the plaintiff's action succeeds. The full reasons and orders of the court shall be filed with the registrar by close of date tomorrow, 13th November 2024. This is the judgment of the court. Most grateful. Goku, Goku, Fanabra, Fanabra, Medu. Oh, make it come. Fanabra, Medu, bring down to the bed. Let me get come here. No photo of your Instagram. No photo of mine. Madam, Madam. Lord, Mike, you know. Madam, oh. But the point I'm making is that whenever the court speaks, it's such a clear and emphatic order. Even if it's a very narrow majority, that's the decision of the court. And that decision must be respected. And I'm saying that it will result in a degeneration of our society and a destruction of our democratic order for anybody at all to refuse to comply with the order of the Supreme Court. And I think that's non negotiable. It's something that we must all respect. I have heard some um, statements by certain political actors to defend that. Uh, the case ought to be withdrawn and that there ought to be negotiation and all that. I'm quite surprised because indeed, firstly, I did not hear such expression of, of um, a willingness to negotiate a law or maybe such instruction to the speaker or direct suggestion to the speaker for negotiation and all. When the speaker started embarking on this act. And I think that for me it's very important that the Supreme Court ruled upon this matter because it is something that had been um, occurring in this country, the tendency for it to occur really was there. The tendency for it to occur again was there. So it's necessary, or it was necessary, that the Supreme Court came to this clear conclusion and determination of the matter, the meaning of Article 97, Clause 1, Paragraphs G and H. And I think we must all respect it. I think the Speaker of Parliament himself, to start with, indicated in his address to the press last week that the case raised very legal, serious legal issues. Those were his words, serious legal issues and matters bordering on governance of the country. In fact, so I must express my shock, utter shock, at this refusal to even file a process. Even indeed, the Speaker of Parliament himself recognized that the matter raised serious legal issues, as he said to the media last week. Where else would you address legal issues but in the court of law? Where else would you have such a definitive pronouncement on, on the so-called serious legal issue that the Speaker himself recognized in his precedent done by the Supreme Court of Ghana? So as for the, the, the Speaker of Parliament, indeed, I is law-abiding, I've known for a very long time, to comply with, with the decision of the, of, of the, the Supreme Court. The, as I said, it is non-negotiable in every civilized society when an order of the court is given, no matter how highly placed or lowly placed the court is, even if it's a magistrate's court, you have to obey until it is set aside. Speaking I, of I, I have you seen the conclusion of this matter? Would you uh, say as an attorney general that there's a need for a constitutional review? What does it relate to, to this? The American constitution itself, very thin, as we all know. Yet, the of the, that constitution has survived over 200 years. I think that, of course, there are certain uh, provisions in the constitution that I think that ought to be amended and I express my views on it 
to the media. Article 78, clause 1, which enjoins the president to appoint majority of his ministers from parliament ought to be amended. There ought to be that flexibility. I think that certain institutions, for example, the Electoral Commission, um, NCC, and what have you, the appointment of their heads has to be with the prior approval of parliament. But not think that it calls for a complete overhaul of the constitution. And indeed, this constitution is very strong. And it is one constitution which even goes as far as prescribing um, consequences of a failure to carry out the Supreme Court order. So the Supreme Court order, the consequences are set out clearly in art Article 2, clauses 3, 4, and 5 of the constitution that any person to whom an order of the Supreme Court is directed shall duly carry out same. And a failure to carry out such an order, of course, has the consequences of, of, of a criminal punishment in the case of, of the president will even result in the president and vice president will result in removal from office. And finally, do you expect the Speaker of Parliament to remove Parliament on its own volition after this ruling, given that the, the court has spoken in certain <coughs> Yeah, I think so. I mean, as I said, it's an emphatic um, determination by the court on, on the matter, and the Speaker of Parliament has no option but to comply. I mean, I think that we must stop giving with one hand and taking with the other. As I said, it will amount to double standards and, and, and an exercise in um, a contradiction. For the Speaker of Parliament, in his address to the media, say that the case raises such serious legal issues and matters body on governance and all that, and then refuse to, to take part. So this country uh, refuse to take part in the proceedings. I think in this country, we must recognize some people for, for, for who they are and what they do. This hypocrisy and, and double standards must cease. The Supreme Court is the final arbiter on all matters in the country, including an interpretation of the Constitution. Indeed, it's the only court solely sees the situation to pronounce on the meaning of relevant provisions of the Constitution. And the Constitution means what the Supreme Court says it means, and nothing more. It is the same in America, and as I said, the America, United Kingdom, and all advanced democracies, that is the order that they respect. There is no way a Supreme Court would give a decision in America or United Kingdom, and then the Prime Minister, apart from expressing his disagreement with the decision of the President of America. We, of course, he has a freedom of expression to express his disagreement with the decision, but he has no option but to comply, and they usually comply, and that is it. Attorney General, many have said that, many, many have said that uh, this decision or this judgment was to be expected, and that the Supreme Court decision will not seem to be in bed with the executive. Can you address that? I think that, so first of all, some principles of law have been established well over decades. There is no principle of law argued in this matter, which has not been established in this country. And indeed, if that's the case, then any case mounted which has in play those principles will be determined the same way. So I think that if there's indeed the rule of law, an element of it is, is predictability. It's not a case where a court of law will rule this way on account of the same principle of law, but rule another way on account of the same principle. So indeed, there must but some element of predictability. And I'm saying that in these, these principles in, that we um, contend with in this matter are old principles. There's nothing new. And for those who are saying the court is acting a certain way and all that, the same people were those who were rejoicing when the Court of Appeal gave a decision acquitting their, their, their leader. Their leader was acquitted by the Court of Appeal. They were happy with it. And to date, he's able to make all those arguments in parliament because he has been acquitted. <laughs> and I did not raise any issue with that but to appeal. I did not say I'm not going to respect the decision of the court. I respect the decision of the court. And until the decision is set aside by a higher court, which is the Supreme Court, that decision will remain binding on all. So we must stop this hypocrisy and, and exercises in, in, in contradiction. As I said, that when the, our reaction or attitude to court rulings depends on how palatable we deem it, we cannot react to decisions based on how palatable we deem it. And that's exactly what is happening. Thank you very much. Also said that, well, look, everybody is saying that this was wrong, this was wrong, it has been perpetuated, and nobody said anything, and so that remains the law. It is not. All right, there was uh, uh, the, 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 an error, uh, it was an uh, illegality, it has been perpetuated. Now somebody has raised their hand. The hand is up now. <laughs> nobody can force the hands down. It's what? The very people who aided or who.
Don't, don't, don't keep on saying aid. Did they aid? Yes. What down on Michael K to uh, come out with that uh, precedence? Are the same people that uh, But, but I, mean, I don't think you are following what I'm saying. There's so much I intend to say. I've made a point. Whatever is it that he said, he wasn't aided, but the application may have been made. I don't recall. Listen, we've been in that house for so many years, you don't recall everything. Unless, of course, you refer to the note. I am saying that, yes, he may have rude uh, the way you people have been telling us. Uh, when we go back to Hansard, yes, he's so rude. We are saying that he was wrong, except that it was not taken up in the Supreme Court. It has now been taken up in the Supreme Court. What's the point? On the day the speaker adjourned, yes. we saw some actions with some. I think you were supposed to have forgiven me. And you have filed a police complaint. Yes, I have filed. I have filed. We are human beings in that parliament. We are human beings. We exhibit human instincts. We are not animals, and we don't, we don't exhibit animalistic instincts. I do not understand why on the matter where my colleagues, I mean, are discussing, and I'm, I wasn't actually talking to the particular Afegi man. I was talking to my nephew, Atu Forsen, the minority leader. I was saying to him, Atu, it is your responsibility to make sure in the circumstances of this case, the Speaker of the House abides by the ruling of the Supreme Court. So talk to him. I mean, we show leadership. That's the person I was talking to. This man came out of nowhere and started pushing me. You guys have all seen the, 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 the pictures, the videos. Pushing. I kept shouting, you can't push me like that. What, what is your business? Why are you doing that? He kept, he pushed me about five times. What did you think he was doing? So you're I have yeah, a yeah, yeah, complaint. Yeah, yes, yeah, I've yeah, a complaint. There are times yeah. where colleague MPs are. This is not colleague. We are not animals in there. Yes, any more questions? Thank you, thank yes, thank you. Thank you. We've achieved peace. So that is all. The speaker yeah. has no choice. He has to accept, abide by the ruling of the Supreme Court. He has no choice. That's he has that's no choice. That's 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 no choice. the way forward. The way forward is for him. Please, please. What to do? The interesting. The, 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 the Supreme Court is spoken. The, the interesting thing about uh, this matter is that, as far as 1968, after the first Republican Constitution, we decided as a nation which can be seen by the proposals of the Constituent Assembly, that two things will happen. The first thing that we decided was that we will have the judiciary interpret the Constitution. In fact, they gave, they said two things. They wanted the judiciary to be the ultimate arbiter of what the Constitution says, and they also wanted the judiciary to be able to give advisory opinions. The people of Ghana rejected the second suggestion and said that the judiciary should not give advisory opinions, but the judiciary is the body that should interpret the constitution. The second thing that is very, the second thing that is important in that entire the 1968 proposal was that they decided that parliament would not be supreme. The supremacy of parliament was not accepted. What they decided was that parliament will be under the constitution. And so all our constitutions since then have followed this position. In fact, the 1992 constitution in Article 1 says that sovereignty lies in the people. That sovereignty was expressed when the people, through a referendum, voted to bring this constitution into force. And the constitution tells us that the supreme law of Ghana is the constitution. Everybody else is under the constitution. Nobody, nobody is above anybody. Everybody has his role. And so the fact that the Supreme Court interprets the constitution does not mean that they are above anybody. In fact, there are judges sitting on the bench. One of them is my classmate. My juniors are on the bench. But once they go and sit there, even if it's my own child sitting there, I cannot but bow and give the person respect, not for the person, no. but for the office and for the law. And we expect every other Ghanaian to also respect the law. We don't all agree on what is said and what is done. There are several times that I've disagreed with what is said and what is done. But because of the respect for the rule of law, because of the respect for the constitution, we just keep quiet and follow the law, hoping that if we don't agree, another opportunity will come that we will be able to express ourselves. So what has happened today, we have not seen the reasons. We are happy because we came to court because we believed that the right thing was that the people had not by their action vacated their seats. So what has happened to them, we are happy about it. Tomorrow, the reasons will come out. And when the reasons come out as lawyers, then we can look at the that reasons the said, yeah. and what the court has said, and then we can discuss it. We, in fact, the fact that the court has ruled in your favor does not mean, mean that you agree with the reasons. You may decide that, you may decide that even the reasons some of the judges uh, gave, you do not agree, agree with it. Two of the judges talked about jurisdiction. We don't know what they said, so tomorrow we will know. And when we know, we will prepare to answer more questions in detail. But as was said by the leader, as far as I'm concerned, today democracy has won. 
constitutionalism has won. And Babin has lost. There's no, has lost. nobody has lost. Democracy has won, constitutionalism has won, and nobody has lost. Every one of us is holding every position that we hold in trust for the people of Ghana. We don't hold it in our own capacity. When you are MP, when you are minister, when you are president, you, when you are speaker, when you are chief justice, you hold it in trust for the people of Ghana and you are under the law. Your time will come and you leave the position. And that is what we must all write. So the four MPs have been reinstated. They must come to parliament. And, and as far as I'm concerned, if the status quo ante is brought back, then this whole dispute that people call uh, him caucus leader, whatever, it will should stop from today. We have a majority, leader. which is MPP, yeah, yeah. and the majority leader is Honorable Alexander yeah. Afeyo Maki. Yeah. It's as simple as There's no, how can I, madam? We've come from court. You want me to give you a constitutional lecture? Okay, we'll take our photo, group photograph. So what we'll do is that we'll talk about that. It's a moment for all of us to rally around the choice we made in 1992, democracy. Democracy requires decency. And that is the path the MPP majority caucus took to ensure that we do right to the law. Nothing more except to say that we expect our colleagues on the other side, including Mr. Speaker, to respect the outcome of this case so that we move to get we move on as a nation. All we have is the peace of the country. All we have is our democracy. And in West Africa and in Africa as a whole, Ghana shines in the eyes of the people in terms of democracy. So this is another feat we have uh, achieved. And we must celebrate it. It's not a matter of MPP against NDC. It's a matter of constitutional you know, uh, interpretation. And the court has given its verdict. We should all respect it and move on. Thank you very much. I think on the... Do you expect the speaker to report parliament? Um, um, let's let the lawyers deal with the issues of law. I think that all we want is peace in the country and we chose peace. And today we've achieved peace. So that is all. The speaker has no choice. He has to accept, abide by the ruling of the Supreme Court. He has no choice. We shall win. We shall win. To save Ghana. 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 Ah, the majority leader.